Pode começar. Ok, so maybe in English, right? Ok. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, so for this uh, this this class, I'll I'll be speaking about the tonelary guising isomorphism. This um, this was uh, used uh, by by Hussein before, and will be used uh, in the classes uh, in the next classes also. So it will be important, and it's not really uh, it's not normally covered in most uh, algebraic topology books. So uh, it's worth to speak a little about uh, this theorem. So okay. So for for just for a, uh, a small summary of what we will do, first I'll I'll be I'll speak uh, about some intuition about the the isomorphism. What is the geometrical meaning of uh, what we are doing? Then I'll I'll give the statement, the formal statement, and some small background just to understand uh, the definitions. And then I'll, I'll prove the theorem, not, not really prove, but give the main steps and explain a, a little bit what, what we need to do. So uh, the theorem is about computing the homology of submanifolds of a manifold, right? So uh, we have a smooth orientable manifold, X, and uh, a compact orientable submanifold of X, Y. Uh, have these these two manifolds, and then uh, the guising isomorphism, uh, the tonelary ray guising isomorphism, uh, isomorphism give, uh, gives us a relationship between the relative homology of the ambient space with boundary outside Y and the homology of Y. Uh, this this mean uh, this means that we can uh, relate a relative homology and a uh, 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 the, and the homology of Y. So, uh, so let's understand uh, what it, what it, what is it in in a bit of a simple case, right? So the idea here is to intersect the relative cycles with boundary outside Y with Y. So the the cycles uh, will be we can see the cycles as as paths or uh, simplexes in, in X, and then we can really actually intersect them, like uh, geometrically, with, uh, with Y and get a simplex inside Y, right? So, and that, that can always be done uh, if we consider a transversal intersection and make a small deformation in the, in the cycles, right? So, uh, Let's see what happens in a simple case. I'll, I'll do some uh, drawings for you to to understand better. So, so let's consider X R two and Y S one, right? So at Y is a compact manifold of R two, and both are orientable, uh, and we can consider the natural orientations. So in this case, Y has codimension one. So first. We, we can consider uh, a relative one cycle with boundary outside S1. And, and what are these? Those are paths joining points outside Y, right? So, so for example, we could consider a path like inside the circle and outside the circle. And then when we intersect this path with the, the circle, we get points, which is a zero simplex in Y, right? And we, we could also consider two cycles in X uh, minus Y. And the important ones here are the, the rings uh, with Y inside the ring. So in this case, when we intersect, we get like uh, paths giving some uh, rounds around S1. And th those, are, those can be the generators of H1 of Y. So let's see in the drawings. So in this first drawing, we have uh, this path gamma. Uh, it's joining two, two points outside S1. And when we intersect, we get a point P. 
So what we are doing here is considering a map from uh, age one of uh, x with boundary in x minus y to age zero of y, right? And the same thing here. So we have this uh, ring in, in green, which is sigma. It's uh, a simplex in age two and with boundary outside y, right? Because the boundary would be the two circles. And when we intersect with y, we get gamma, which is uh, a path in y, right? So here we, are, we have a path uh, map from age two of x with boundary in x minus y to age one of y. So the difference would be, would be the codimension, right? So now, uh, and, and this map is a, an isomorphism. We can see it's an isomorphism by constructing an inverse, like in a geometrical way. So uh, the idea here is that for, for each point, we can, we can kind of uh, consider like a, a, a disk neighborhood of it and, and get a relative cycle. So look here. So we have this point P, which is a cycle. Uh, we can consider it as a zero simplex. And then we can like consider like a disk of, a co of dimension one, which is the co-dimension. And this disk will induce a path uh, like in the first picture here. And the same thing there, if we have a, a, a path, we can consider disks for each point and get like a kind of a tubular neighborhood. This will be important for the proof and, and, and get a, an inverse of this map. So uh, it's more or less intuitive by these geometrical ideas that this map is going to be an isomorphism, right? So let's see how the formal proof goes. Uh, but uh, the important thing is to keep this in mind that the, this map in the end is just uh, the intersection with uh, Y, right? So it's not kind of a really complicated thing. It's just um, the intersection. And so, Let's state the theorem informally. So the theorem says that if you have an orientable manifold and an oriented compact submanifold of codimension C, then there is an isomorphism uh, uh, from uh, the, the, the boundary, the, the, the homology of, y, of X with boundary in X minus Y with uh, the homology of Y of the degree minus C, right? So from AGM of X, X minus Y to AGM minus C of Y, right? So we just subtract the codimension. This is just because we are intersecting, right? So we have a M cycle in X and we, when we intersect with Y that has codimension C, we will get C, uh, the dimension will drop by C, right? So this is just simple intersection computation and this map is the, this intersection map we we considered uh, here so in the next few slides I'll, I'll give a more precise definition of this map so I'll, I'll define which map is this and I'll try to 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 prove the theorem, right? So not, not really prove with all the details, but give the main steps and the main ideas. Uh, a spoiler is that this proof is very similar to Poincaré duality's proof, uh, but it's not really uh, in any book. So, so I'll try to kind of adapt uh, what we do in Poincaré duality. So, but, First, we are, I'm going to introduce what are the cup and the cap products. But I, I don't know if you have seen that before. Ah, okay, just, just for you to know, here I'm talking about singular homology every time. Um, so you told us last class that uh, you were familiar with this. But I decided to define the cup and the cap products just for... 
ah, for a kind of a completion, but I don't really need cup product here. The cap is, is more important for what we're going to do. So take any topological space and we can define the cup product, which is uh, this map from HK times HL to HK plus L. And uh, what we do, we get uh, a simplex. How can, so how can we, so this is from cohomology, right? Cohomology. Uh, so we, have, we get two cocycles and we define the cup product of them by this formula. Uh, what is this formula? We are just uh, restricting our uh, cycle to the first coordinates. So the first K, the, uh, the first K, K vertices and taking a simplex there. And else, and then for the last L simplexes and L vertices and taking a simplex there. And then we get two cycles and we can, uh, not, not even necessarily cycles, but we get two simplexes, singular simplexes. We can apply our, uh, our our maps, right? Our phi and psi, phi and psi, and then this is the cup product, right? So uh, just for for intuition, this in the Han cohomology, maybe you are familiar with the Han cohomology. Uh, this is exactly the the wedge product in the Han cohomology of if we consider uh, differential forms. But uh, also, this is important to to see that this map also, if we if we have, for example, a compact manifold, and we have Poincaré duality, we could just uh, we, ju we could just consider this map in homology, right? Just by taking the duals like k to n minus k, l to n minus l, k plus l to n minus k minus l. And then we have a map in in in, com in homology, and this map in homology is just the intersection of uh, our cycles, right? So uh, it also has a geometric meaning this cup product, but it's really easier to define it in homology because in homology we can just uh, apply the maps, and in homology we have to think about transversality and deformations. So. So that's the point in defining a cup product. Okay, and the cap product uh, is kind of related to the cup product, but it's a map from from H K the cohomology K, K cohomology fifth cohomology of X and N cohomology of X to N minus K homology, and this is just uh, we apply. It's similar to the cup product, but we just apply. The, our our cycle to the first k k vertices of sigma, and then we leave sigma uh, alone, right? We leave sigma with the last n minus k vertices, and then we get this this cap problem. And it's interesting because if we apply uh, an n minus k uh, cycle to to the result of the cap product we get just the cup product applied to sigma. So that's kind of the, the meaning of this, this product. So it's also related to, to intersection uh, as the cup product is. And the important, another important fact about the cap product, okay, so, so we, we actually have to prove that both these maps are well-defined, right? So because we are considering classes in homology, uh, uh, spaces, homology groups. So we we actually have to consider to prove that it's well defined. But I'm not doing this here. But I mean, this needs to be done. And the important thing here, another one, is that this cap product can be defined for relative chains. So for uh, for H K of X A and Hn of xA, and then we can define a map for Hn minus k of x without a, right? So it will be well defined. Uh, so it's important that you know this. The, the, I mean, the proof is not really complicated. The, the thing is that 
uh, I mean, it's just to consider the classes and, and, and then you see that it does not, uh, it, is, it is well defined, right? So I, I'm not really doing this, but it's just a small computation. But this last formula will be important in the, in the next slides. Okay, so now we start proving the theorem. So uh, the first thing we need to do is to reduce to a disk bundle, right? So what are we going to do? We, we are cons using the tubular neighborhood theorem to obtain a tubular neighborhood of u in y of y of a tubular neighborhood u of y in x, right? So it's that that geometrical idea I told you uh, in the third slide, I, I guess. So for each point, we can consider like a small disk of dimension c, which is actually the co-dimension. And then if we do this for all our points, we get like a tubular neighborhood. And then you use excision. I, I, I guess you are familiar with excision. And then we can consider just um, this neighborhood, right? We can excise the, the rest of X. And then again, uh, we can look at this neighborhood as a, a, a normal bundle, as the normal bundle of Y, right? This is like the neighborhood, the tubular neighborhood theorem. And so, what we have is that uh, we we now are we have reduced the result to to this normal bundle, and then by choosing like a metric in this vector bundle, we could consider a, a disk uh, for each point. Right? We we don't need to consider all the vector fiber, the the vector space, which is the fiber. We can just consider a small disk around each point. Right, so now we we are by excision again. Right, if we excise the rest of the vector bundle, we get like a disk bundle uh, D. So that's the important thing. Like now we are we reduce it to a disk bundle, and and now we can prove and the proof the rest of the term. Uh, in many books, we have some results like this for vector spaces. So for example, in, in Hatcher, he, he does some thing related to guys in sequence and, and this tonelary guys in isomorphism, but he does it on cohomology and for vector bundles. So he, he doesn't really uh, state and prove this exact result I'm proving here, like for the complement of uh, a submanifold. Uh, so, so, and so it's very different. And but I mean, what I want to say is that in many books we will find results results about uh, bundles, right? So it's nice to have bundles in this in this case. So now I'm going to talk a little about the tone class, which will be important for us to define our map. So what we want to do is to define a cohomology class. In, D, uh, in this relative cohomology. And this will behave in a similar way to the orientation class for compact manifolds that we have, uh, like in Poincaré duality. So this will be essential to define our isomorphism and for us to, to, to use the ideas of Poincaré duality. So first, uh, we, we can note that, oh, everything is oriented, so we have a natural generator for this this group, for each fiber, right? Because in each fiber, we could, we could consider, like, uh, our space Y as it's in the tubular neighborhood, we could consider Y as the zero section of our disk bundle, right? This is, is normal. Uh, and then, after doing that, uh, we when we consider... Uh, a point and a fiber over this point, we, we have a natural genera generator because uh, the, the, the bundle will be oriented. So we can choose a generator for each point. And also, if we have a small neighborhood where we, in which we can trivialize the bundle uh, by simply 
considering uh, knowing that this this neighborhood trivializes the bundle, uh, we also can find a generator for the whole neighborhood, right? Because it's oriented and so for each point we have orientations that agree and and yeah so so we can find like a generator a local a local uh generator for this this fiber this exact this exact uh relative homology right so uh, for uh, for now it's similar to orientation right so in orientation for each point we can find a generator and then uh, considering like a, a small chart around each point, we can find a generator, a local generator. And in this case, it's the same, right? For each point, we can find a generator and then locally by trivializing the bundle, we can also find a generator. And then we want to find uh, a global generator. So uh, yeah, we can find a, a, a local generator and the point, the, need, the thing we need to do is to prove that we can find a global class in, uh, like we do in compact manifold. So this here, uh, we are going to use that why is compact. And we are also going to copy the argument using in Poincaré duality. But so just the steps here. First, we need to cover y by a finite number of small open sets and in which we have this local class. So this is simple because y is compact. Then for small compact sets inside each chart, we have to prove that we have a small, a unique class. Uh, and first, and for doing it, for do, in order to do this, we first have to consider com convex compact sets and then non-convex compact sets. So this is really simple. And I mean, it's not really simple, but it's, oh, it's more or less simple. And for com convex sets, we can contract, so it's uh, similar to what we do for a small neighborhood, so it's more, more or less simple. And for non-convex, uh, then we can consider the union and, and use some meyer vietoris argument. So that's what we're going to say in step three. If we have two compact sets with a unique class, phi k and phi l, there's a unique class phi k union with L in k union L. So, uh, so for doing this, we have to consider like a meyer vietoris sequence because uh, we will have so like a k intersection with L and then uh, this will be the, in k intersection L we have like a class and then in k and L we have and then we use meyer vietoris and five lemma to get a class in, in K union L. So it will be more or less simple, right? So just write the Marvietoris and, and then we'll have a class in the union. And for in order to finish, we just use that Y is compact again and we could write Y as union of compact sets and then use number three, right? And number two, because these compact sets could be contained in small neighborhoods, right? Uh, so that's it. So now just to, um, I try to go a bit faster. So the, to define the isomorphism, uh, the idea is to consider uh, the tone class in, in, in our space. And then we can define it uh, like this. So if we have a class here, in, in HD, D minus Y. Then we cap this class with our class phi, which is global, and use that uh, last statement in the cap product to, to consider just D, not relative homology here. And then we finish by just applying the projection and getting a, an element in Y, right? So this is the definition of the map. Uh, and this is actually the intersection we were talking about because this phi kind of, uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I mean, I mean, this is not a, a simple thing, but the idea here is that phi takes away the, sorry? Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is that phi takes away the coordinates we don't want and more or less like this. So, so 
you want to talk, uh, speak about it? Uh, yeah, let me just uh, three minutes for just the idea of the proof, and then uh, we can yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, just now it, it will be really fast. We are just ending. So we have this definition, and so for proving this, we have this Marvietori's argument. We have to use this. This is really uh, common in in algebraic topology. So what we do is that if we have two functors for abelian groups, so in most of cases, these will be uh, variations of uh, homology and cohomology. So if it's if they, they are equal, they are isomorphic to sets homeomorphic to Rn or M set, if, we, if they have Meyer-Vettori sequences which are, uh, uh, I mean, uh, for which uh, phi induces commutative diagrams, and if they have this excision kind of uh, property, so if we have a union, so if we have an increasing collection of open sub, sub manifolds, and for which we have isomorphism in each uh, u alpha, then we have to have an isomorphism for the union, right? So if we have these three properties, I forgot to write the end here, then then the, the it's it's true for every manifold. So it's, they are isomorphic for every manifold. And that's what we want to do. So by this theorem, what we need is just to prove one, two, and three. I, I would give like a brief idea of the proof of this theorem, but, uh, but I mean, I, I'm out of time, so maybe I won't do this, but I mean, we just need to do it for convex sets, then use uh, Meyer Vietoris to consider any open set and then use kind of a Zorn's lemma based on number three. But if you want, I, I can send you, uh, I can refer, uh, show you the book in which the proof is, tell you which book is. So in order to prove that phi is an isomorphism, we just have to uh, use uh, proof conditions one, two, three. So if phi is, isomorphism to Rn, it's really simple because the disk bundle will, will be trivial over Y. So, I mean, everything is going to be kind of trivial because uh, we would have that everything is Z for just for M equals C and zero for the rest. And for M equals C, we get like that the, the generators just need to go to a point. I mean, any, everything is trivial. So I'm not going to, to, to enter in details here, but we just, the, the thing is that the, the bundle will be trivial. So we can write the homologies explicitly and see that the map is sending. I mean, in most cases, it will be just both homologies will be zero. And in the important case, which is M equals C, uh, it's easy to see that Pi send a generator to, to a generator. Because, I mean, it's the cap, so it's going to be the simplex generated by its last coordinate. And this is going to be a point in Y, and it's a generator of H0. So it's, it's pretty trivial. So for number two, it's more complicated. We have I mean, it's easy to see we have uh, Meyer Vettori sequences. I mean, for this, it's really obvious because it's just the, the, the normal homology. And for this, it's not really obvious. But if we look, if we see that it's uh, a bundle, uh, we can see that this we have this union here. And then we can just write the, the, our Meyer Vettori sequence in the in kind of a usual way using the, the Meyer-Vettori sequence for relative uh, homology. This is, uh, this is not really common, but I mean, it's fairly known. And the difficult part here is to prove that the diagram is commutative. So this is, is kind of hard, at least for Poincaré duality. Here, I think is also complicated, uh, but yeah, so, so the part, the difficult part is to prove that phi is going to induce commutativity in this diagram. And for last part, uh, if we have a, a inclusion of open sets, we have this both, these two maps here. 
So here for uh, Y and here for our bundle. And then this is gonna induce like two, two chains and, and two, this will induce like uh, co-limit diagrams, right? So we can take the co-limit of this, this thing. So the direct limit, maybe I could say like this. And he, in the first case, if we take the direct limit, we get AGM of Y. And in the second case, we get AGM of D, D minus Y, right? Because just because the sets are going to, uh, the union of them are going to be the whole thing. So as those as we can induce maps from here to here and from here to here, which are just restrictions of phi, if we compute the co-limit, uh, the, the map will be phi because those are just the restrictions. And by the universal property, it will be an isomorphism. So we have condition three just by considering co-limits instead of, uh, I mean, just by using this fact that we get the, the co-limits and, and yeah. So, so yeah, so that, that's the theorem. So this proves the theorem because we have the three conditions. And just for in the finishing, well, a nice corollary, corollary, corollary we have is that this sequence here. So if we have uh, X and Y, we could consider the sequence of pair and plug instead of instead of uh, considering this this homology, we could plug the isomorphism here and consider the homology of y like this. So we have this y contain, containing x as with the hypothesis of the isomorphism. So we have a longest x sequence, which is like just the sequence of pair with this one instead of this one, right? And the, the thing is that we have to, in this sequence, important to know that this first map, this first map is just the intersection. And this is just like uh, considering that neighbor, that uh, tubular neighborhood, considering getting a, a, a cycle in here and then apply the boundary map, right? So okay. we have this sequence. And just the references, so I use it like Hatcher, this Friedman is from where I took uh, Meyer Vietoris argument theorem. And this is the article in which this theorem was first presented. So that's it. Thank you. I hope no. I didn't take too much time from you. Okay. Uh, let me 